Welcome everybody to this small video. So today we had the first day of Mikai 2020 virtual conference. Very exciting event. There are a lot of many things have been going on. We had these Zoom sessions, we had these virtual posters. And what I really like about this conference is that you have time to watch also videos about all of the posters and they have at least 10 minute videos that you can watch separately to go into the topics really deeply. So I like this a lot and this is why I thought that I make a small video and present a couple of the highlights that I've seen today and I would also like to share them with you. So actually it's only a small portion of the stuff that I found super interesting. I can only present a couple of things here in this video and I also need the consent of the people that I have been asking that I can show their slides. So this kind of brings in a small bias into the things that I'm showing, but I think I still have a very nice selection of works that I want to show to you in this small video. So looking forward to show you my personal selection of highlights of this day of Mikai 2020. Okay, so these are my highlights of Mikai 2020 and it's a short summary of today. The first paper that I want to highlight is Deep Active Contour Network for Medical Image Segmentation. It was presented by Mo San, Bing Dong and Quan Seng Li. And they are from Peking University and also from Harvard University. What I really liked about this paper is that they combine the classical techniques with deep learning methods in order to build better and more reliable systems. So what you can see here is that they build upon the classical Chan Weiss model for image segmentation and this is built on top of an energy functional that is essentially describing a curve that is given by C here and the image is essentially given by U naught of X and Y and the complete energy is then constructed as the length of the curve, the area inside of the curve and then the integral over the image inside of the curve minus the mean value that is expected inside the curve and another energy term that is measuring the distance between the image and the mean value expected outside of the curve. So this is a very classical image segmentation model and they extended this approach into the following architecture. So they start with a raw image, then have a CNN backbone, and this is producing parameter maps and initial contours. And this is then used in their classical method. So they have a differentiable module that they call ACM module here that is built on the previous energy term. And this is then producing also a prediction of the segmentation. And as they produce initial contours, as well as the predictions with the classical module, they can define two different losses, the CNN loss and the ACM loss. And this is constructed then together as a final loss. And the entire system is trainable end to end within this kind of framework. So I enjoyed this paper a lot. I really recommend to have a look at the paper and you can find the link to the publication in the description of this video. Another paper that I would like to highlight here is the paper by Newton Mwai, Kinyan Yui, Timothy Odonga and colleagues from IBM Research Africa, Carnegie Mellon University, Africa College of Engineering. So they have this paper entitled Fairness of Classifiers Across Skin Tones in Dermatology. And they were looking at the following research questions. So the questions were, are standard dermatology image data sets used in machine learning tasks biased with respect to skin tone? And are they able to quantify this? If so, does the data set bias lead to unequal performance of downstream disease classification? And what they did is they took databases, inspected them with respect to skin tone 
and trained respective models based on this and then essentially looked at the performance of those models in order to identify bias. And I can tell you the paper is super interesting. Have a look at the paper. It's really quite surprising what they find and this is actually very good evidence that we really have to think about how to build machine learning models that actually can work with bias emerging, for example, from skin tone. Really very nice paper. The next paper that I want to highlight here is Voxel to Mesh 3D Mesh Model Generation from Volumetric Data. And it was written by Uda Ranga, Vikram Singhe and colleagues. And they're from EPFL. So their introduction is essentially that you now have all these CNN models, essentially units, and they try to generate these typical voxel-wise predictions. And what comes out of these models has to be post-processed to remove false positive regions. Then you need the marching cube algorithm in order to extract a mesh or construct a mesh. And then you do mesh smoothing, which is then the final mesh output. So the pipeline that they propose is to have an input volume and then their voxel to mesh approach that directly generates the output mesh. And this is very interesting. And the main idea that they have is they have a voxel encoder that does a downsampling and upsampling again. So you get essentially results on different resolution scales. And simultaneously in a linked fashion, they have some input mesh here a sphere and then they apply deformations to that sphere to match the respective representation in the voxel decoder. So this allows them then to gradually deform this mesh in order to produce the final output mesh. Also very interesting paper. I really recommend looking at this. The next paper that I want to show here is a very nice approach where they use active MR case-based sampling with reinforcement learning. And it's offered by Luis Pineda and colleagues from Facebook AI Research and McGill University. The problem that they are tackling is that typically in MR measurements, you use compressed sensing techniques and they produce partial case-based measurements. Now you typically use best practices in order to find the case-based sampling patterns. And then you derive a reconstruction model that uses, for example, compressed sensing or deep learning based methods. The problem with designing the case-based pattern is that it's discrete. You either sample the point or you don't. So it's actually very difficult to design it in a data-driven way. And they come up with this very nice strategy where they use reinforcement learning in this cyclic kind of fashion where they have this active acquisition in order to refine the sampling strategy simultaneously with the actual reconstruction. So this is a very nice approach and I really recommend having a look at this paper. The last thing that I want to present here in my short Mikai 2020 summary for this Monday is MRI image reconstruction via learning optimization using neural ODEs. And this was presented by Eric Chen from United Imaging Intelligence. So classically, you do your MRI reconstruction with format model, and then this is inverted using some inverse problem strategy because the inversion is sometimes unstable, in particular when you go towards compressed sensing. You then add regularization, and the emerging solution scheme is actually a gradient descent procedure. Now what they suggest to do is to follow the idea of ordinary differential equations and you can essentially interpret the solution strategy for our inversion problem as an ordinary differential equation where you essentially have the solution scheme, so the gradient descent scheme, as the derivative over time that you then try to solve using this kind of solution scheme.
This is a very interesting technique because it essentially allows you to learn the solution scheme and what then emerges is that you not just learn the actual reconstruction but you learn how to perform the optimization strategy for the reconstruction. Now you can essentially do this in the following way. So you have some initial condition, which is the undersampled image, and then you can estimate the dynamics and the ODE solver and so on in a way that it's completely trainable to construct the reconstructed image. And you can even train the solution strategy. And for the solution strategy, then they suggest also different networks where you can have time-dependent convolutions up to sophisticated update schemes that then really try to learn the optimization algorithm. So since I like embedding of known operators and things like that into networks a lot, I really enjoyed reading through this paper and they really did evaluations of different strategies. So they presented in the full paper. So I also recommend having a look at this one. So I hope you enjoyed this small summary of Mikai 2020 of the Monday. So you see that I selected only a very small set of papers. So I believe there's almost 100 papers presented today. So unfortunately, I can't present all of them, but there have been plenty of very good papers. And of course, not all of the authors could agree in time with their slides being presented by me in the small video. So this is, of course, also one of the selection criteria. So I wouldn't call this a best of really, but a couple of the papers that I really enjoyed looking at today. And I hope you also find some interesting ideas in these papers and enjoyed watching this small video. So thank you very much for listening. And maybe I even do another summary of Mikai 2020 for Tuesday tomorrow. Bye-bye.